Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to configure a WPA2 Enterprise SSID, and then in ICE, configure that SSID to authenticate against Active Directory, and send back a group policy that gives the Active Directory users, um, you know, higher priority. This will be using EFMS Chat V2 as well. So to get started, um, we've already got this Active or this ICE server uh, joined to Active Directory, so we just need to create an authorization role. We can usually make this fairly simple. However, let's go ahead and add a rule right beneath our wireless blacklist default. And we'll call this uh, employee AD users MS chap. And I'm saying MS chap because later we will be configuring a rule for ETLS. We're going to say if any device that or any user um, that uh, external identity group equals, we're going to use domain users. And then let's add an attribute value and say network access, and then EAP authentication equals EAPMS chap v2. And then we're going to add one more because we want to make sure that if they're using EAPMS chap, which is, which is just a username and password, but they also tunnel that traffic with a, with a peep tunnel. So we're going to say network access, and we're going to say eep tunnel equals peep. This is the default. If you were to click on an SSID that was a radius authenticated SSID, you typically would use peep eep MS chap. Um, you could also use, uh, you know, peep eep TLS if it was configured for a certificate, but by default, your machine will use just eep MS chap um, text credentials. And then let's see, we're going to add one more and we're going to make sure that we only allow this authentication from a certain SSID. So we're going to use, well, I would go, it's usually radius and then called station ID. You can also search up top, but we'll just uh, select it, ends with, and then we're going to call this SSID ice radius. Okay. Now next we need to create an authorization rule. So let's go ahead and let's move to standard and then let's add a new standard profile. We're gonna say, this is called MSChap users. And then let's, we're gonna just send an access accept and then let's also send back a filter ID. This is what we can then map to um, Let's see. This is what we can then map to a group policy in dashboard and apply different, you know, access policies based on that. So we'll call this um, employee. Now keep in mind, we're going to have to configure this uh, group policy in dashboard once I'm done here. So once we click save, there we go. Now we're also going to build one for machines, because when you log out of a Windows machine, it's going to try and authenticate with the machine information. So let's go ahead and duplicate this same rule below, and then we'll call this AD computers. And let's take off that copy at the end. And then we're going to drop this down. And instead of using the, the Alnet external groups being users, we're going to use domain computers. Everything else can stay the same because we're still going to be authenticating with PPMS chap, still coming from the same SSID, and we still want the same access privileges. So let's click Save. Okay, now the ICE portion is technically complete. So let's go over to Dashboard, and we're going to rename this SSID to ICE Radius. Save. Let's edit the settings. I'm not going to have to modify much because the um, previous configuration had a lot of the information in here, but just just for clarity, you want to see, choose WPA2 Enterprise with My Radius Server. We want to do WPA2 only. We don't want to allow WPA1 devices to connect um, unless you have to, but using a WPA1 is not nearly as secure, especially if the machine uses TKIP. Um, and then we also want to choose Cisco Identity Services Engine Authentication. This is in case we need to send a redirect to that client after they're connected. 
um, we're able to send a URL redirect back to the access point saying, hey, um, we need to change the authorization of this user and redirect them to a page. And then from here, the RADIUS server, we want to put in the port 1812 for authentication and then the secret. We don't need to enable RADIUS testing. You can, but you don't need to by default. Um, we also want to make sure RADIUS COA is enabled as well as accounting. And then put in the accounting information using port 1813. Notice here we have specified that if we respond back with a filter ID, um, that that'll actually specify a group policy. So once we're done configuring this, we're going to then configure our group policies. So one other thing to add is allow for a walled garden, um, allow for the IPs of your ICE server or servers um, in this list. And then here, we usually want to use bridge mode. You can use nap mode, but bridge mode works pretty well. In the recent beta, we have enabled uh, the ability to use uh, a tunnel data to a concentrator. However, you want to be careful with that. Um, the concentrator also has to be running uh, the latest beta code as well. Um, from here, we don't have to use VLAN tagging. Um, we can allow our radius server to mark a different tag. We're not going to in this instance. And then we're setting it as dual band operation and a minimum bit rate of 12 megabit per second. Let's click Save. All right, now we need to create our group policy. So let's go to Group Policies. Let's add a group. And we're going to name this exactly what I called that filter ID as employee. Bandwidth-wise, we want to just allow as much bandwidth usability or or much bandwidth is, is available. And then let's, uh, we can create a custom network and uh, firewall and shaping rule. And let's go ahead and add a layer seven firewall rule, um, or actually add a new shaping rule. And let's just do, you know, for VoIP and video conferencing, let's say all, let's obey the network per client limit, but let's set these tags um, to be higher. So let's say, um, let's set this to a WMM value of six, and then we could set the, the cost tag or PCP tag to whatever you'd like. Usually want to set it fairly high so that it uh, takes uh, some sort of priority on the layer two network. So other than that, let's go ahead and click save. Now I'm going to pull up my virtual machine that has um, been joined to Active Directory. I have disconnected the wired NIC, and so I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the wireless down here and scroll down and find my SSID that I can't find anywhere. Let's see. Ah, the SSID is not enabled. That would be pretty useful. So let's go back here. Let's go ahead and enable ICE radius and go back to my VM again. Here in a second, this should pop up. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and click Connect. Since we haven't configured this or pre-configured this in group policy, nor have we pre-configured it on the machine, it's probably going to ask me for my credentials. However, what we're going to do is just use my Windows user account and click OK. This should take just a minute. And while we're waiting, let's go ahead and go to ICE and go to Radius Live Logs. And let's see the log information here. So if we refresh, we should see a past authentication, which actually was back here. And I never disconnected the previous session config. So let's just click here and we'll see the auth information. So you can see here, so we were able to get on the network. Let me go back to my machine. You can see we're connected and secured. Um, but we're able to get on the network. You can see the username that I used. You can also see the authorization policy we created for AD users. And we can see the authorization result as MS chap users. If we keep looking through here, we can grab a lot more information, such as the fact we used PPP MS chap. We can see that it came from uh, one of my Meraki MRAPs, as well as, let's see, we scroll down here, we can see that we came from the ICE radius SSID. If I keep going down, we can also see that we responded back with a filter ID of employee. So since we responded back with that filter ID, let's go ahead and check the client list in here. So as you can see here, we have uh, this wireless VM. 
config here. And if we look, we're logged in as my Alex user. And we also have this .NX policy of employee, which is that group policy. Okay, so now that we've got that configured, so any, any domain user that connects to this SSID is going to get that employee policy. We want to make sure that also the uh, um, domain computers can connect when someone logs off, especially if they need to receive um, any policies um, you know, from a group policy server or from Active Directory. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to log out of this machine. So let's go ahead and sign out. This will take just a second. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and watch these logs here. We should see an authentication for the host machine. There we go, and it failed. That's great. So we can find out why. So let me see if I'm logged out here. Okay, I'm logged out. Let's go ahead and launch this. So remember, we configured um, our SSID or our, our rules to allow only host machines that are authenticating with PPMS chat. Um, we can see the user is host slash wireless dash VM, which is my wireless VM is my uh, virtual machine. You can see we did use PPMS chat, EPMS chat, um, and we do see quite a few other things, such as authentication did succeed, and we'll have the information here. Let's keep looking through. Authentication failed. Let's see. So we just matched the rule default. Let's uh let's look at that rule set again. So let's go back and look at policy and authorization. And let's make sure I didn't make any mistakes here. So we have it configured to Oh, they're both configured for domain user. Well, that would be an issue. So what just happened is I didn't match any of the rules in my list. And since I didn't choose domain computer, um, I did not have an entry that I could authenticate with. So let's go ahead and save that and make that rule correct. So where it says that we're coming from an external group of alnet.us users, domain computers, and the rest of the information. So we may be able to just sit back for a second and wait for the machine to try to log in again. Chances are, though, we probably don't want to wait that long, so let's try this. Let's log back in, and then we'll log out again. Let's see, so we should see my user try to authenticate now that I'm logging in. Yep, so there we are, so I re-authenticated as my user. You can see I'm connected. Now let's go ahead and log out again. And let's watch ICE. Soon we should see that same host slash wireless dash VM and should see it pass authentication. Yep, there we go. So as you can see here, we have a pass authentication for host slash wireless vm.alnet.us. Let's go ahead and click on the magnifying glass and let's take a look at the um, authentication. So as you can see here, we match the default.1x policy for authentication. And then for authorization, we match the employee AD computers MS chap rule. So as we can kind of scroll through here, we see a lot of the same information we did for the users. Really the only difference is going to be the you know, the account that's been used um, and a couple other little fields here, but everything else, including the employee response, um, should be uh, should be more or less the same since we duplicated those rules. Now, if we go back into the configuration or the client information here, it may take a minute or two to up update in dashboard. However, let's click on here and see the user account. As we can see, it changed the user account in dashboard to show my host account and shows that I also still have the employee.1x policy. If you were trying to find out what that actually means, you could click on it and go to the actual policy and be able to you know, manipulate this policy if need be. 
maybe we decide, hey, look, this, uh, this AP is coming from a remote, remote site and we need to use a custom bandwidth limit. Maybe we say that everybody gets five megabit per second because we don't have a lot of bandwidth. Uh, it's very doable um, and easy to change, um, especially uh, through here. So let's just do one more thing. So since we've done that, and let's log back in. And I'm going to show you real quick how to forget an SSID so that we can test. And we're going to test again with a certificate in the next set of videos. So let's go ahead and go to Start, Settings, and then Network and Internet. And we want to go to Wi-Fi. As you can see here, we have an SSID configured. We want to manage those known networks. Let's click on it, and let's click. We could click Properties, actually. Let's see what we can see here. Not much. Let's click forget. So this is a kind of a way to you know start fresh, especially if you're testing uh, a new deployment or you're testing just a configuration to see if it works. Anyway, I uh, hope this was informative for you, and I thank you for viewing.